Hi, everyone. Welcome to Creekside. I'm Mrs. Hudson, the principal. And I'm Mr. Harridge. I'm the assistant principal. And we wanted to take a little time today to talk to you a little, about, a little bit about some of the safety parameters that we've put in place in the school and some of our procedures that might look a little bit different than we have had in the past. So the first thing we want to talk about is the student self-certification. So prior to your child coming to in-person learning, we would ask that every parent completes the student self-certification form. On the first day of school, your child will receive a backpack tag with the QR code. So again, whether your child is a car rider or a bus rider, we would ask that you complete the self-certification form on a daily basis. If your child is a bus rider, we would ask that you initial next to the date on the back of the card. If your child's a car rider, you will simply be able to scan the QR code on your cell phone and you'll be able to show it when you come through the car rider line that you've self-certified. Some of the signs that you will see in the school are meant to help us from, uh, remind us how to stay safe during the day. One of them that you'll see is the washing hands frequently sign, the making sure you're wearing your face mask, mask sign, also making sure that we remind visitors and students that you must self-certify before entering, and then you will also see a sign that contains pretty much all four of those where it talks about wearing your mask, maintaining that six foot distance, washing your hands frequently, and being sure to stay home if you are showing any symptoms related to the COVID-19 virus. One of the things we wanna to talk to you about is a slight change in our car rider arrival. So this year, our car rider, car rider arrival will have a checkpoint and the checkpoint will be right outside of door G from the main parking lot. So as parents, as you drive in, if you're dropping your child off by car, you're gonna simply circle around the, the main entrance and you're going to pull up to a checkpoint at door G. At that point, you'll be greeted by a staff member who will be checking to make sure that you have self-certified your child prior to them getting out of the car. Again, you can simply show that they're green on the self-certification on your phone. If for some reason you were unable to self-certify or you need assistance, there will be staff members there to help you through the process. We will have additional QR codes available. We will also have paper copies in case there's any technical issues. Once you've self-certified, you will then pull around where you'll be greeted by another staff member at door B. At door B, your child will simply get out of the car and they will enter the school. For those students who are riding the buses, just like with the cars, bus arrival will look a little different as well. The cone there will mark the drop-off point for the buses. The buses will only be dropping one bus at a time because much like with the front, we need to make sure that we're checking those luggage tags to see if the child has self-certified. If a student has been self-certified by their parent initialing the luggage tag, they will follow the sidewalk into door D, which is our normal entrance door for buses from previous years. If a child does not have their luggage tag initial to indicate self-certification, they will go to the left and follow the sidewalk up until they get to door E, where there will be another set of staff members here with the self-certification list. If a student is on that self-certification list, they will simply walk through the doors and turn right up the main hallway where you see my mouse moving and they can walk to class that way. For students who do not have the initial luggage tag nor are on the self-certify list, they will instead turn left to the entrance of the multi-purpose room and they will go to what is considered station three. At station three, those students will be checked or have a temperature check. And if they do have a temperature, they will be sent to the isolation room where they will be monitored by another staff member and, and also called by the main office requesting that you come and pick up your child. For students who do not have temperatures, they will remain inside the multi-purpose room and they will be sitting at these desks here to begin using Zoom to participate in their classroom. During this time, the staff member who is at station three will have walkie the main office and the main office will have called those parents to make sure that self-certification can be completed. Once that self-certification is completed and confirmed, those students will then be able to pack up their materials and walk to class as well. So 
So a couple other safety measures that we have put in place here are you will notice that all of our water fountains are actually turned off. However, you'll see the water bottle fillers are still on. So students are able and encouraged to bring a water bottle to school. And during the day, if a student runs out and they need to refill it, they can simply ask their teacher to go to the water bottle filler to fill up their water bottle. Another thing you'll notice is the other picture is a picture of inside one of our bathrooms. To, to help with social distancing, we have put sink signs up. So sink one and sink two, please stand here to hopefully make sure that students are standing six feet apart when they're in the bathroom washing their hands. We've also placed a reminder to make sure that they are washing their hands on the center of the mirror. Other things that students will notice when they're walking around the building that's different from past years will be the cones in the main hallways. Those cones are gonna act as our traffic lanes as you'd see on any normal roadway. So for students walking through the building and transitioning between classes, you will have to stay on the right-hand side of the hallway, much as if your parents do when driving on the road. You'll also notice the one-way arrows, so those will help guide you in which direction you should be going. Additionally, some of our stairwells have been labeled as up or down only stairwells. If you come to one of those where you want to go upstairs and it is labeled a down only or vice versa, you will see a do not enter sign on the wall. And then you will also see the one way arrow pointing at you rather in the direction of which you would want to go. So this is a sample of a kindergarten classroom. So you can still, you can see some things still look the same, it's bright, it's colorful, it's ready for students learning. What you'll notice are a few things that are a little bit different. You're going to notice that the tables are slightly farther distance apart. And you're also going to notice that there are some clear plastic partitions. They're kind of tough to see in the picture, but they actually divide that table into four little cubicles. So in as a kindergartner, and I know we, we had an opportunity to meet a lot of you this week, you will come in and you will, you will sit at a table, but you will not have somebody sitting right next to you. You may have somebody sitting diagonal from you, but you will be protected by the plastic partition. And then of course, you will still be required to wear your mask. This is another example of a classroom up in the fifth grade wing. These are generally what our classrooms grades one through five will look like. And what you will notice as well is that instead of having individual desks spread out in groups or in rows, they are in two desk pods. So all the desks on one side will be group one, all the desks on the other side will be group two and same and so forth through the rest of the classroom. Group one students will obviously not have group two students next to them and that will help us to ensure that there is at least that six foot gap there for that social distancing. We are also not utilizing our cubbies this year for student materials. So students will be having their coats and backpacks on the chairs behind them or the chairs next to them. Students will also have the ability to utilize the workspace of the desk next to them, but however, they won't be able to put anything in that secondary desk. Only materials should be placed in their own desk. This is to ensure that our custodians who will go through and clean the rooms every night can make sure that all of those surfaces are clean, as well as on those deep clean Wednesdays that occur as well. So the picture that you're seeing now is our care corner. So our care corner is an area in the front hallway of the school um, by our display case that will be used for students who maybe aren't feeling well during the school day. So a teacher will simply call down and say that she has a student who is not feeling well and, and the nurse will then meet the child at the care corner. At that point, the nurse will take the child's temperature and see what's, see what's going on with the kid to see how we need to provide assistance. If the child is exhibiting signs of potential signs of coronavirus, then the child would go into the isolation room supervised by an adult and we would contact you to come pick them up. If for some reason the child needs other type of care, maybe they hurt their finger, then the nurse would simply walk them into the nurse's office to provide the care that they needed. What you'll see in the next couple of slides are some amazing signs that our teachers have created and put on the billboards in several different areas of the class, of the school.
the next slides are pictures of the gymnasium. And the gymnasium right now is repurposed for, um, for many things, but this is showing you, if you can look closely, there are please stand here signs that are um, about seven to eight feet apart. This space will be used for our students who are car riders and dismissal. So students will be walked down here and they will be asked to stand on their spot and then the um, parent or guardian will pull around and we will make sure that we check your car rider tag and then we will call in and the child will then come out. So this will be the place that any student who's getting picked up by car, they'll be un until you can pick them up. Much like with arrival, we will be utilizing the gym door area for our student dismissal for car riders. So you'd pull up and utilizing the cone system for those families who've been using it in the past, it will be very similar to that. For those families who are new to it, you will see stations one through eight. And when you pull up, a staff member will greet you, ask for your student's name, and at which point they will walk you into the building to get that kiddo and have them walk outside. So rather than this being up by the kindergarten doors as in past years, this is similar to our arrival, where you'll come in through the main entrance, swing around the wide um, staff parking lot and parking at those cones. So we, I know Mr. Harridge and I went through a lot of information today. Um, we are um, super excited to welcome our students back starting February 1st. And we are here and to keep your kiddos safe and provide a safe environment. Please, please, please contact us if you have any questions or concerns. We, uh, this is one of our bulletin boards that is right when you walk in the school. It's we're bursting with positivity at Creekside. And we are super excited to welcome everyone back.